In this episode, we will see how an electroplating line is manufactured. Electroplating represents an intrinsic step of many production processes. It is used in various industry sectors, wherever zinc, tin, cadmium, nickel, or gold plating is required. And how is a production line for electroplating manufactured? To explore the entire process in detail, we visited the Galcor plant in Coronovo in Cuyavia. Ultimately, all paths cross at the laboratory which is a place where, for example, bath compositions are analyzed, encoding thickness and resistance to corrosion are tested. Furthermore, wastewaters are thoroughly analyzed here by chromatography or UV-VI's spectrophotometry. The company is a manufacturer of electroplating components, so it also has its research and development department. Components created here are supplied to automotive, aviation, aeronautical, and defense sectors. Technical documentation is developed in the design office, each time to an individual customer order. Over 100 electroplating plants were first designed and then manufactured in Galcor to this day. The documentation is first delivered to the metal processing department. Here, carbon steel is fed onto bandsaws and then transferred to welders, who join individual components with different types of metal sheets. Here we can see how a laser cutter prepares a supporting frame for a plastic electroplating tank. The cut details are shaped on a hydraulic press brake and then transferred for machining. Here, metric threads are formed, either manually or automatically. The next stage involves sandblasting. To clean steel and prepare components, such as a tank frame for welding. After verifying parameters of a cut material, all components are joined together by gas-shielded arc welding. Following the sharp edge shot blasting, the formed structure is transferred for wet coating. The plastic electroplating tank is manufactured simultaneously. How is it done? First, plates are cut to a smaller size, depending on the customer order. Then, plastic subunits such as bottoms, setting wedges, main ledges, or block supporting ledges with transport openings are cut on a plotter. Here, a plastic box for setting a tank bottom is heat sealed. Now it can be joined with the metal frame to form a finished structure. In this case, welding of inner and outer shell is important to effectively protect the structure against corrosion. But the work does not end with the tank and its frame. The product must be provided with all necessary devices and accessories. Let's see how it's done. Here, details for exhaust's ventilation are manufactured. And here, components of plastic, steel, and rubber are cut out with a high-pressure water jet. Subunits for manipulators, centrifuges, and hydraulic presses are machined. At the reverse osmosis station, demineralized water is produced for closed circuit systems. The devices shown here are barrel aggregates used for electroplating of small details, such as bolts or nuts. Finally, we take a look at a warehouse where organic chemicals used for electroplating are stored, which it is a proprietary production secret. However, we can say that they include various brighteners, decreasing and passivation additives, and agents for neutralizing wastewater. And how does the complete electroplating line from Galcor operate? To see this, we accepted an invitation to Oot Oil in Jezgon. 
The company operates a fully automated and environmentally friendly electroplating plant. It has its own wastewater treatment plant, full air filtration, and is connected to a photovoltaic plant. All equipment is connected with one proprietary, configurable, and flexible program that controls the entire line. The entire control software is managed by the cloud application GalCloud, which synthesizes all technological and technical data and plots it on a user-friendly chart. Remote electroplating? It works! If you liked this episode, you must see how...